personality, gruff, pompous, conservative, and harshly critical of nearly everything I enjoyed as a youngster and beyond, especially the TV, films, and music I have always spent so much time consuming. Perhaps it was Dad's critical demeanour that contributed to my own frequently unhelpful sensitivity to criticism, not only of my own efforts, but those of the people I admire. Wow, this is just the introduction, and I'm already getting started on the self-analysis and dad blaming. This is going well. The truth is, my dad was more than just a grumpy old reactionary. He was also thoughtful, loving, and determined to do the best he could for me, my sister, and my brother. Then he was diagnosed with cancer, and for the last nine months of his life, he came to live with us in Norfolk. As you might imagine, it was weird and stirred up a lot of emotional silt that for many years I'd been happy to leave undisturbed. Fucking emotional silt. A few weeks after my father died, David Bowie checked out too. People like me, for whom Bowie and his work had been a constant source of pleasure and fascination throughout their lives, were surprised by how upsetting this was. For his fans, he represented something vital, otherworldly, and, yes, immortal. I think part of me assumed that instead of dying, Bowie would be beamed into space by well-dressed non-binary aliens, or that he would just implode during a live streaming event, leaving a sparkly portal to a dimension filled with challenging electronic music. But then he goes and gets liver cancer, which any twat could get. Talk about a letdown. The message from Dad and David Bowie seemed clear. We're in your DNA and it's corroding though I'm not sure that's scientifically accurate. So now might be a good time to take stock, to celebrate the things that have gone right, to examine the things that have gone wrong, to consider how much of it all you're passing on to your own children, and to put it all in a book, mixed with some tales from my formative years, just a pinch of dad-blaming, and some light name-dropping. Did I mention that Harry Hill once wrote me a very flattering message on a paper plate? Ramble! I'm recording this out on my walk with Rosie, walking along the fields out behind our house in Norfolk, where I record the intros and the outros for my podcast. And one of the things I like about the medium of podcasts is that they can very easily accommodate the kind of rambling and tangential conversations that I enjoy having with friends. And I wanted this book to reflect that with these rambles that will pop up from time to time. But buckles, you may say. Tangential rambles are fine in a podcast, but in a book, they might just interrupt the flow of your sublime prose. Well, that's a fair point. Thanks for making it. But I like tangential rambles, and they appear from time to time in this book because that's how they appear in my life, constantly interrupting the flow of the central narrative and taking me off on detours and down cul-de-sacs that sometimes make me despair at my inability to concentrate on one thing and see it through to a successful conclusion, but at other times are more interesting than whatever else I should be doing. OK, a few other notes before we get going. This book jumps around to various points in my life in a way that, to some stupid people, might appear more or less arbitrary. Clever listeners will know instinctively why I've done this and will not need me to explain it here. And as for the stupid listeners, don't worry, you'll be fine. I focused on my dad far more heavily than my mum or any other members of my family because, so far, he's the only one that's dead. And now he no longer has the power to make Christmas uncomfortable. It feels okay to be indiscreet about him. My wife and children are shadowy presences not because they aren't an important part of my life, but because they are the most important part of my life. So I try to be somewhat protective and not use them for material unless there's a poignant moment or a cheap laugh in it. My wife is a lawyer, so they've all signed release forms. When my dad was the age I am now, a person as silly and ignorant as me, sorry dad, as silly and ignorant as I, would not have been considered worthy of having a book published. What can I tell you? We're living in sick times. Ramble. Fly pass from the hairy bullet. Anyway, look, I wanted to say this audio book was recorded in March and April of 2020. It is mid-April as I speak.